Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, so, four years ago, we um, uh, embarked in this uh, adventure of creating a new department of digital arts and cinema. I was given this uh, responsibility by my university, the National Capodistrian University of Athens, and um, we had to create this new department in the new campus of the University of Athens, which is actually one and a half hour away from Athens. So we're out there in the nature, which is great. I, I realized it only when I got there. And <laughs> I realized how, how um, interesting it is to be situated out in the nature and actually given the task to create digital art. So that's another thing that we can talk about. So this is a, a new department. It's only three year old. We're actually completing our third year of function. We, uh, uh, next year we're gonna have our first uh, uh, students uh, graduating. Um, we are a part of the National Competition University of Athens, uh, uh, the oldest university in, in Greece. And what we're trying to do with this department is uh, you, you probably noticed the digital arts uh, field and cinema coexisting. Uh, we actually do believe in this. Uh, we think there's a certain complementarity between the two um, fields in the sense that uh, cinema production nowadays is largely digital, based on digital media, and at the same time creating digital arts uh, looks back into the tradition of cinema as one of the forms of art in the last <laughs> decades that has been developed and researched so much. So we do believe in this coexistence of the two fields. And <clears throat> I guess as we develop our department, we're gradually gonna have two very different directions collaborating. But now that we're still babies trying to grow up, we're together, all professors working together uh, uh, collaboratively in these uh, directions. Um, so, um, uh, the, the, the three main directions that we aim at educating our students is cinema and audiovisual arts production, uh, digital and interactive arts production, and we do focus a lot on virtual environment design and production because we believe that right now we're at a point that there's a very big need for actually working on this area, you know, because uh, um, uh, virtual environment uh, design and creation uh, is in need of a lot of research on its creative aspect. So, um, very briefly, I'll go through our curriculum. It's, uh, it has, uh, it, it, it kind of structured in a way that uh, it, it, it has uh, several classes on the cinema and audiovisual arts, on the digital and interactive arts. Uh, we work a lot on the technical background of our students, so we, our students have to, to write code, they have to work on their own digital creations, uh, 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 and they have to, to, to learn how to code on the web, how to write code in order to, to work with ubiquitous computing, 3D programming with virtual environments, 2D animation, and so forth. And of course, the, the whole thing has to be based on very strong uh, theoretical bases relating to art history and theory, cinema history and theory, communication theories. Uh, there's art classes, of course, because they have to be able to create in two dimensions and three dimensions and work with the actual materials with their own hands. And, and we try to build a lot on the sort of digital technologies background uh, with uh, the programming skills. So. Uh, and we have also created uh, three labor laboratories to start with. One is a, a cinema production studio, another one is a, um, is a digital media, multimedia and sound editing laboratory, and there's also a, a laboratory that's uh, kind of aiming at creating 3D spaces, be it uh, uh, physical, uh, virtual or hybrid, like mixing the uh, 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 material and the immaterial aspects. Of course, we're an art school, so I'm just gonna show you very briefly and quickly some educational activities and some student works. I think it's the only thing I can do. We're a young department. Uh, I'll show you what we have done so far, and I'm very open to uh, questions and, and discussion and collaborations too. And so we're out in the nature, as I said, so the, there's a lot of uh, painting and drawing happening out in nature. And we're, we're actually trying to work with the other colleagues as, as to how we are going to um, um, target uh, uh, our curriculum in a manner that, uh, sort of, uh, that uh, um, um, is geared towards creating in nature 
and um, in a sort of environmentally aware um, uh, manner. I have to mention here, I have to mention here that um, uh, last year, uh, in the particular area that this department is based in, which is Avia, it's an island very near uh, Greece, a very big island, but it's like lo linked to the land, the mainland. Uh, we had one of the worst environmental disasters of all time, the huge fires, yeah? So like uh, one third of the forestry of the, of the island was destroyed uh, within the space, the, the, the two weeks or three weeks. It was an amazing disaster. And as a, as, a, as a university, we're trying to sort of help the area as much as we can. We're not the only ones, of course, that we're trying to do that. So we have one more reason to want to be as much environmentally aware, to create this, uh, to, to, to infuse this mentality into the creators that we are educating. And, uh, and two days, um, in two days, uh, I, I will travel to uh, the north of Evia, has happened where there's a new festival, it's called the Evia Film Project, and in collaboration with the International Thessaloniki Film Festival, we are collaborating there to, to create this uh, new festival for ecological, for green documentaries, yeah? So that's another project we are uh, sort of trying to work with, uh, with a, a big uh, European festival, which is the Thessaloniki Festival. Um, Last year, when we were all uh, uh, working, teaching through WebEx and Zoom, um, it, was, it was terrible to actually try to teach uh, uh, um, interactive art creation, you know, via teleconferencing interfaces. Yeah, it was dreadful. So what we tried to do, we changed our curriculum a little bit. So what we did in the spring semester last year is that we taught the students how to compose um, assemblages, forms, and spaces in virtual environments, and the class was happening also in virtual environments. So we, we worked the whole class in a multi-user virtual environmental context, yeah? It was much better. We used WebEx more or less as a sound, <laughs> as, as a better sound sort of uh, communication uh, tool, but the whole thing happened in there. And uh, we learned a lot from this, and it's something that we will pursue. Uh, if we need it or not is an issue, but it's, it's, it's a question, but, but it, it's a very interesting research issue, what happened in there educationally. Um, so the, 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 the students learned how to compose in virtual environments, and the whole class happened in virtual environments. We used OpenSIM because we thought that we would, we would not want to have the students create content that would be lying on a cloud sort of uh, based uh, proprietary company like uh, Second Life or Sansa or whatever. So th their creation uh, is in our own servers because we created the whole context in our own servers. Another interesting class that happened this year was uh, the first class on creating interactive installations. So um, there was some interesting projects that came out of this. Uh, so the, cre the, the students created some interactive uh, sound or interactive video installations. Here you see a project where the sensors are laid on a body and the, sort of the video is interactively uh, evolving. And um, another example, I'm I, if I have a few minutes, I will play, eh? two or three minutes. So I'll quickly play a little bit, very, very short experts of the videos from these projects. We're collaborating right now with a project titled Erasmus XR with the Yangilonian University, the Lutz Film School, Woods Film School, to say it correctly, and the University of Malta. This has to do with the creative aspect of uh, 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 creating art in virtual environments. And uh, we're also a part of uh, a 10 European Universities Alliance uh, with the universities you see uh, here. Uh, and uh, very quickly, I'll play very few experts, very short experts from this. Um, like, hope this plays, yeah. This is an interactive sound installation that the, the students created with Arduinos and with sensors, some of them proprietary, some they made themselves. And uh, this is uh, an, oops.
Okay, and I'll show you a very last one for a minute if possible. This is an interesting uh, audiovisual uh, project that uh, the students on the sound programming course created. It uses the Xenakis' approach on cellular automata and creating music with that. And it tries to establish some sort of language between the visual and the um, uh, auditory uh, in this uh, uh, project. So these are all third year school uh, uh, students of uh, this department. These are third year projects. and I wish I can speak to you later about that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dimitris. And now from uh, Athens, we go to nearby, Valencia. We're having uh, to get today with to, uh, us uh, Salome Cuesta, uh, Vice Rector for Art, Science, Technology and Society in the University Politecnica de Valencia. And we have Maria Jose Martinez uh, de Pison, Director Cultural Action Area. Uh, in, since 1990, uh, the group Light Laboratory, located in the Faculty of Fine Arts in Valencia, has founded as a meeting, study, and research space for aesthetic and expressive principles linked to the light image. Currently, the components of the laboratory belong to different departments, and their participation varies depending on the proposals that are being developed. Working between the collective and the individual, between universities, researchers, and artistic activity, between the production of projects and the dissemination of text. As an area open to those who want to develop their work under the interdisciplinary structure. So the talk is going to explain us about the, uh, how Universidad Politecnica de Valencia is starting up uh, this new department of uh, this new uh, structure of art, science, technology, and society. Um, so, yes. Please, well, uh, feel like at home or nearby. Good morning. Uh, uh, we are Salome Cuesta and Maria Martinez. Uh, we are glad to be here to present the Vice Rectorate for Art, Science, Technology and Society of the Universitat Politecnica de Valencia. This new Vice Rectorate represents a commitment of the Rector Jose Capilla to establish connection between science, technology, art, and culture inside the university. And to making this connection contribute to the development of the local sociocultural and economic context, as well as right now, uh, to its international projection. At our university, the Faculty of Fine Art is integrated into the Polytechnic campus. This has made it possible to build, over time, a unique ecosystem to promote those figures that, from complexity, articulate the intersection between artists' expressive capacities with scientific exploratory ones, the engineers' inventive ones, and the designers' communicative ones. As the bioarchaeology, no, as the bioarchitect Neri Osman expresses in her diagrams, a circular energy flow drive the transfer of capabilities and types of knowledge to each other. 
Our mission, in addition to promoting education and research from our interdisciplinary point of view, also incorporates a commitment to equality policies, sustainable development, and climate emergency. The Vice Rectorate of ASTS want to promote a new culture of art, science, technology collaboration that contributes from the policies of equality and diversity to social development. It will also be a space of connection with the sustainable development goals. For all these reasons, the people who make up the Social Action Office, the Equality Office, the Cultural Action Area, and the Heritage Area work together in this multiple and synergetic vision that reinforce the commitment of our university with social responsibility. Let's take a look at some of the reasons why. When we, when we were studying uh, for our final degree, some time ago or long time ago, Jose Maria Iturralde transferred to us with enthusiasm those interdisciplinary ideas of the 60s. And in some way, those key ideas have long shaped us. Now, we feel the need and the responsibility to give back what we have learned, the space that we must give ourselves as a public institution 